have evidence in many fields to prove something like this. So I sent it to the editor and I said, if anyone could show me just a few sculptures or portraits of Africans in America before Columbus, I would take another hard look at this matter because he, he presented no pictorial proof and he knew nothing about skeletal material, so he couldn't provide skeletal proof. And the editor at Random House, Charles Harris, called me up and said, Van Sertima, something strange has happened on my table. You ended your piece by saying, if anyone could show me images of Africans in America before Columbus, I would take another hard look at this matter. And I turned the page, and I turned the page, and I turned the page. There were seven images of Africans. John Williams, the novelist, author of The Man Who Cried I Am, had been to Mexico and met a strange German, last of the Royal House of Germany. Hitler put him in charge of the German embassy in DC. And something happened and he was dismissed. I was later to find out why he was dismissed by Hitler because Hitler sent around a circular saying that everyone in the diplomatic service has to sign a statement saying they're a pure Aryan. And von Wuttenau wrote back, now he was a conk, the last of the royal house in Germany. This was strange for von Wuttenau, strange for anybody in that position. Wrote back to say, there is no such thing as a pure Aryan. All people have black blood. Oh God, he had to flee after that. Because <laughs> Hitler would have gotten him. So I rushed off to Mexico to meet this strange man. And I went to his chateau. I'd, he'd heard about me because I had written him first and told him what I had done. And we sat in that place, okay? We sat on his steps half the night arguing because he couldn't, you have to show me a hell of a lot of evidence to convince me of something that everybody believes is, is true history. And he says, I said, I have to see these heads. He said, I have a few in my study. I said, that's not good enough. I have to be sure that they are valid, that you are now making this up. He was a little annoyed by that. He wanted to throw me out of the house. But nonetheless, I persisted. You have to prove this to me. I need to see sculptures of these people. And he says, they're not in the big museums. They don't take chances like that in the big museums. You have to go to private collections and the next day he started to take me to private collections and I was utterly stunned. You would be surprised how much history is hidden in private museums. And there are just some things that are not comfortable for white people. They're not comfortable for them to talk about the possibility that Africans were here before the Europeans. So what do you do with the heads in Mexico that you find at San Lorenzo, at Tres Zapotes. What do you do with those? All right? You ignore them. What do you do with Columbus's diary that says the Africans know a way to the West, but it goes around the doldrums, we would never survive? What do you do with that? You ignore it. What do you do with Balboa's diary that says, we came upon this African village in the Isthmus, How did these Africans get here? What do you do with that? You ignore it. Why? To preserve the myth that the Europeans were here first. What do you do with all of this written literature and history that says that Abu Bukhari II of Mali sent 200 ships to the west and one came back and said they were afraid that the others disappeared. And then to have Balboa find this village that looks just like Mali, where he was, what do you do with this information? You ignore it. You ignore it. Why? To preserve the myth of white superiority. That's what our whole educational process is devoted to. What do you do with this whole history? This is a written history, my dear written. I'm not talking about hearsay. I'm not talking about a griot said this. I'm not talking about something handed down from one generation to the other through voice. I'm talking about written history of the Egyptians. What do you do with this? You ignore it. In 1922, he published an extensive three-volume piece uh, called Africa and the Discovery of America. 
Now, unfortunately, this is the 1920s, so as yet, no serious archaeological evidence had been done to, or work had been done to support his botanical theories, because everyone knows over raiding tombs in, uh, in Egypt and things like that. Nod to Howard Carter. So, he didn't have a whole lot of other stuff than, uh, than the names to support him. However, he knew that other clues must exist. For example, he pointed out that Columbus himself was aware that African mariners had preceded him. In his diary of his second voyage, uh, Columbus tells of how the natives of Hispaniola actually had given him gold-tipped metal spearheads that they said were brought by black-skinned people who had come in large boats from the south and southeast. Hmm. Coincidence? I think not. No. So uh, what's interesting about that, so upon returning to Spain, is that he actually took the spearheads and he, uh, he sent them away and they had them uh, assayed and it turned out to be that they, uh, uh, the, these spearheads were covered in this metal, that, uh, this alloy that the inhabitants called guanin and uh, <coughs> the metallurgists uh, actually found out that this was an alloy of 32 parts. It was like 18 of gold, six of silver, eight of copper, which dun 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 matched the metal used in spearheads made in Western Africa for thousands of years as carried by medieval African warriors, including the Mali and the Moors. The West Africans even called this metal guanine, the same name used by the natives of Hispaniola. But nothing more was said about that. Conspiracy. Well, probably because, you know, they, in the interest of Spain, uh, it, was, it was in their best interest that they didn't want to have any challenges to their discovery and the claims to the islands of the West Indies. Well, as the poem goes, or it should anyway, in 1493, Columbus stole all he could see. Yeah, so on his second voyage, which was 10 times larger than the first, uh, Columbus went on a frantic but unsuccessful island hopping trip to find gold and spices. He carried along 